Now, this is the Scottish Rite building in L.A. See that? That's M. Hotep. That's M. Hotep right here. And this is Zosia. Up under him is Hiram and Solomon. Up under him. Huh? Go and see it for yourself. Go home, plug it in, Scottish Rite um, building in L.A. and see it come up. He's up under M. Hotep and Zosia. Solomon and Hiram of Beth. Uh-oh. Back to the shrine. It's got Ramesses' name on his, I guess that's a uh, fast. <coughs> now, I actually said, when we're keeping up with dates, Ramesses is around 1500, 1600 BCE. That's, that, that, that's almost 800 years older than Solomon. But they keep saying, so, I, I got to keep coming back to that. Because they keep saying Solomon and Hiram of Biff. But they got our ancestors' names on all of their artifacts, their clothing, their temples. Ask yourself why. Wait, oh, I got something waiting on y'all. I just can't wait. Nah, this in Philadelphia. This is the Egyptian room. Huh? Look at it. See the columns? See the, the layout? You see the wing sun this? Columns, they got a little cracker uh, face up there. That's where they went wrong. And you see the altar, where in the Egyptian temple there would be an ark on top of that altar. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Still. So what the Mason got? He ain't got no damn secret. The secret is he ain't got no secret. Back to this. And now I'll show you this is in Philadelphia. Uh, I don't know if it's a Grand Lodge. It might be a Grand Lodge. But if you go on the internet, you can look it up Philadelphia Grand Lodge. And it should come up. Now, guess who grave this is? This is George Washington's grave. See the Tekken, the Obelisk of Asa? I mean, this is the most dominant. Symbol of Freemasonry. Not even that G and that compass in the uh, square. This is the most dominant symbol. Don't believe me? Go down to Elmwood Cemetery and stroll through Elmwood. Man, them crackers got obelisks in there as tall as George Washington obelisks. And it costs five, six hundred dollars to lay a, a basic, you know, headstone. headstone. So you can imagine how much them obelisks cost. Some of them obelisks in there got to be at least two, three hundred thousand dollars. At least. Abraham Lincoln. Where Solomon symbols? Where Harlem Abyss uh, symbols? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Andrew Jackson. Who went to uh, Memphis, Tennessee and constructed his fake uh, uh, so called Egypt down there. Yeah. Now look at this. Guess who, guess who, guess who uh, headstone that is? That's your boy, Charles Taz Russell, the founder of the Jehovah Witnesses. Huh? That's right. That's his symbol. That's his headstone. See the uh, uh, nice Templar symbol there? See it? Pastor Russell. And these niggas will come up and put a watchtower in your hand. And tell you, believe him, and you go back to the founder, and he's studying our ancestors. Come on, now. Nah. That's how you know we've been fooled. <laughs> There's a nice temple assembled that they got right here. Let you know, he was a mason. There's the nice, little raggedy nice temple. <coughs> so I can get this in. It's wrong? Okay. Now, these are cemeteries throughout the world. Masonic cemetery, you only know a rich white man can afford something like that. Do you understand? We just said how much a small little uh, headstone would cost. So you can imagine how much this costs. But you see Jesus, you see Mary holding the baby Jesus, but you see the pyramid. You see the winged sun disc. It's, you see the horn the, the the lion, to show you the connection of where, where Christianity got its knowledge up out of ancient Egypt. 
I'm going to keep it going. That's down a little bit. But you see the Wayne Sun disc? This must be in Paris because it seemed like a, a French night. You see Mary with the baby Jesus. You see Jesus with the lamb. But he's over an Egyptian temple. Again, this is a, a, what you would call a, a, a master box. You see the Egyptian columns. You see the horn acting. And I mean, you can look all the way in the back. Ain't nothing but obelisks and Tekkens back there. A master box. It's a single story tomb. See the, you see the Egyptian columns? See the wing sun dips. Now keep imagining, these peoples is going in the grave with our ancestors, symbols, but you go in the grave with the crack of Jesus. And these are the Masons that published the Bibles. Who you think publishing them books? Masons. They give you the Bible, but they go down with our ancestors. This is tape. He didn't spend. He didn't spend at least a half a meal. He spent at least a half a meal to have that constructed. This Dodge. Now that's right there on Eight Mile, out at uh, Evergreen. Evergreen. I went out there and took this. This is Dodge. Dodge ran. See how he went down. What do you really believe? You understand what I'm saying? This is in um, Elm, Elmwood. Look at that. That, that tech and that obvious. I'm going to keep it moving. Now he put a cross on a pyramid with an Egyptian doorway. <laughs> he, 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 what, what else, I mean, what else does it display? It, it displays that they can't do without Egypt. If you take away Egypt, what do you have? This is another one. This is a, a, what you call a true sphinx, because a sphinx is a woman. The horn market is not a sphinx. Sphinx is Greek. But you see the winged sun disc. See the pyramid here. Again, a sphinx. All over the Masonic world, in all these cemeteries, they going down with our ancestors' symbols. You got, the, you got the falcon. Hey, Rue, with the sun dips. This is the Holy Spirit. You got the dove. And you got the, whatever they want that to be back there, but that's the sun. That's the Holy Spirit. That's all it is. But they say that the Egyptians worship animals. And I brought this out because you got the dove for the Holy Spirit. You got the golden calf that they was worshiping when they came out of Egypt. You got the brazen serpent that Moses raised up in the, uh, the, the, the desert when they was wandering through the 40 years of uh, wanderings and through the Sinai Desert. Then you got the 12 bulls that's at the uh, Solomon's Temple that holds up the sacred basin where the priests wash their hands. I'm going to bring you back to that. There it is. You see the sun disc? The only thing is, they replaced the falcon with the dove. There it is. So I'm sorry if, you, if you're Christian and you thought that you was free, that you were scot-free, that the Mason was scot-free, that the, the, that the Jew, that the Muslim was scot-free. Basically everything that we know of today came out of Egypt. Not saying Egypt was the oldest, but Egypt was the jump-off point that where it went into the rest of the world. Now these colors. Red, white, and blue. See the eagle? Now you see these colors right here on the medallion. This is a minahe. Except there ain't no eagle, they got the vulture of neck back up there. Red, white, and blue. And you see the cracker, they make sure they put white in his skin. To let you know that they knew the difference that they wasn't no damn white man. Because they put white in his skin. But they didn't put white in their skin. It's a brownish red. Goes back there where the Masons were still. Red, white, that's the British flag. That's the French flag. See? So vivid. The red, the white, and the blue. So vivid. You can't get away from that. Neck bat on the walls. I think this might be uh, Hashepsut's temple. Right here. 
and you see up here the columns. You see the red, you see the white, and you see the blue. See the stripes on this man's hat? Uncle, Uncle Sam, your uncle, not mine. You see the star right there? He say, I want you. Nick, go over there and fight in Iraq and die so we can get your wife food stamps for the rest of her life. Here you go. It's a nucleus. You see the red, white, and blue? You see it up here, too. Those was colors that was sacred in, in Africa, in Egypt. The Masons went over there and saw them, col them colors and took them colors and created them flags. 